just trying it a different time. There we go. Hello, YouTube, so far. <laughs> the only ones. Oh, YouTube. <laughs> no Facebook. Uh, it's, I don't know why it's delayed, but. Something just dinged around here. Hmm. Okay. It could be my phone dinging that you connected to oh. Facebook. Well, that's good. All right, let's stop that. I don't. I just don't have the chat uh, come back. It's usually delayed. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's. It was my phone dinging that. Your all show that will go on. live in oh, five good. seconds. Oh. Four, three, oh, wow, that was quick. two, one. Blog Talk Radio. Blog Talk Radio. He's doing that a couple of times. Here we go. This is All About Wine, the talk show dedicated to the wine industry since 2009. Featuring winemaker, cellar master, vineyardist, and tasting expert, Ron. Basically what we're trying to do on this program is just trying to educate people and trying to make wine less confusing and more friendly. From coast to coast and around the world. You know, we really have had some some neat people on the program. I, I just, I love that. Post your questions and comments during the live show on our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash allaboutwinebtr. Again, that's www.facebook.com forward slash allaboutwinebtr. And now, yeah. All About Wine is on. It is. Here's Ron. Here it is. Well, all right. I was just while that was on, I was watching the live podcast go through on Facebook, mm. and I have to say, if you all wanted yourself a good laugh, follow the show on Facebook and read the automatic generated captions. Oh no! What <laughs> because <laughs> what? No, what's going on? <laughs> But it just it just changes words. It's just like you know, it doesn't know what it, what a word is, and so it just throws anything out there, mm. and it just it it gets funny. It really <laughs> it really does. Oh, great. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. So if uh, if you uh, want to try to follow us and want a good laugh, then just tune into the Facebook Live podcast and then just read the captions don't listen to me just read the captions and you mm. go what what's that you know <laughs> so all right <laughs> I, yeah i was wondering what, okay, what, I I wonder what it said because it I, I have read it during the actual show itself but I never uh oh yeah never was uh, paying attention to well the opening too it just it, I, i've followed that a few times and it changes stuff and makes up a word here or there or something and <laughs> Coins a phrase, you might say. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. Um, well, welcome to All About Wine. We are live. It is now Thursday evening, 7.02 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on July the 29th, 2021. Hmm. So if you want to call us, then don't we're not going to answer but you can text us or you can write this or you can leave a message whatever and we will answer your questions and comments and everything and if you want to get a hold of me you can always go to all about wine uh 101 at gmail.com mm. and i will get in touch with you and let's make comments or anything and if you know anybody who wants to be on the show or anybody who would like to be on the show or anybody who knows something about wine or anything like that then email us and we'll be in touch we'll schedule a time when they can get on the program mm -hmm. which like someone just did we're going to have a guest hopefully in two weeks from tonight we should have a guest so we're making the plans and arrangements for that cool. even as we speak so uh, I went to uh, I went to an Italian restaurant last night over in uh, Kissimmee, Florida, which is uh, south of uh, south of Orlando. It's called the the Italian Joint, 
So you can imagine what they serve there. Yes, they do serve Italian food. It was very delicious. But on the door, they had a big, a big sign on their door saying VIP wine tasting. And I thought, oh, I thought it was that night, but apparently. Uh, and I got to tell you, the traffic in Kissimmee is the worst I think I've ever experienced. Um, in the whole wide world. I agree. In the whole wide world. the worst. I have never... I was coming back from St. Cloud um, at the some kind of TSA thing to get a, a the whatever they call it the fast pass for TSA, and um, I was coming back and I go oh I'll cut through Kissimmee and blah 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 and it took me through downtown and I was like oh this is really nice little downtown, passed by the restaurant before I got hungry, and ran into traffic, and that was when the problem started. So I already passed the place. And I rerouted because I was, you know, I was thinking, oh, let me go, you know, find a place to eat and found one and uh, rerouting, you know, that kind of stuff. Six and a half hours later, I wind up back in downtown. <laughs> Kissing me. I was like, oh, my God. it was it, it took I think it took an hour to circle back around and get to it. John Young Parkway was messed up. Uh, some other all these little streets and stuff. I was taking back roads and. You know, this, the stupid GPS was saying, oh, turn right. And I go, no, I don't want to turn right. I want to go this way. And um, <laughs> because it wanted me to cross over four lanes of traffic at a stop sign. And that's out of my vocabulary. I do not do that. And yeah. I look oh, down yeah. the street. It wants me to turn on. I'm like, no, that if, that if it doesn't have a stoplight, I'm not dealing with it. So I was driving. Exactly. And, and I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's it's stupid I, I, and and it's a major yeah. road it's just it's it's the worst i've ever been at first i4 got stuck in going to st cloud and then coming back it was like oh there's i wanted to avoid i4 so i thought oh, oh, cuz uh -huh. fine oh that was the worst uh but this place it's a, it's a nice little place there's parking up in front you know on the street right in downtown cuz i mean it's a it's a quaint looking town downtown and um yeah. Oh my gosh. Nice. What a but it had this sign on there and it is uh Wednesday, August the eighteenth. They have a professional oh. som sommelier. Uh they have a live guitarist playing blues and you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh uh it's supposed to be it, it, it's supposed to be a big deal there. But um yeah, VIP wine tasting if you're in the Kissimmee area. Um do it. But eight PM, eight thirty PM I believe it starts, so you may wanna you may want to start getting there like I don't know twelve noon. Noon. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It, it's right there on Broadway in Kissimmee, and you know I didn't tell them I was going to say anything, but uh, I just I was catching it, and I go, oh my gosh, they have a wine, you know, and uh, pretty interesting stuff, but uh, really small, but uh, very very nice place. It was good. <clears throat> that sounds like it'd be a good chance. Anybody in Central Florida mm -hmm. coming up on in, what three weeks? Yeah. Uh, yeah. in three weeks and that would be a great thing to do because yeah. the little Italian restaurant probably is going to be pulling out some of their good Italian wines and oh yeah um, the song you could tell people about them and all that that, yeah. that sounds like a great venue and a great VIP great opportunity uh, and uh, reservations are required so and it is limited capacity it's not a big place uh, but you know they have a few tables but it's not it's not that big but uh, they have a nice Nice little bar, um, and they serve other types of drinks. But uh, the the wine, I thought, oh, that would be uh, pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. name of the restaurant again is it is the Italian Joint, and it is the Italian Joint, huh? the Italian mm -hmm. Joint Ristorante, and is right or pizza pizza runs pizza runte. Oh, I forgot that part. Okay, the, just the Italian pizza joint. runte. Yeah, uh -huh. but um, yeah, really, uh, the, the food was great, but uh, it was. Ooh, a little bit on the high side, I think, as far as yeah. that goes. But uh, it, it it was uh, it, it's a good place. So um, yeah. I should have told yeah. them. And I, I, I want to re <laughs> tell them. I, I want to revisit that traffic in, in Kissimmee. Oh, I took the Florida Turnpike. This was you know two or three months ago, and if you go straight ahead on the Florida Turnpike, it eventually dumps you into I four. But what it does is it puts you almost north of Orlando. Mm -hmm. Then you got to come back. Well, I figured I would oh. circumvent that and take 192. Mm. 
that was a mistake that I will never, ever do again. 192 cuts right through Kissimmee. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, my, it took us took us four hours to get out of Kissimmee. It oh was a God. Saturday afternoon. Ooh. And the traffic on every street was packed. And yeah. the GPS said, turn left up here. And it was like it, the GPS told me that a half a block from turning left, and I'm in the right-hand lane, okay? So Ooh. you don't turn left. You no. you turn right and cut around the blocks two or three times, come back and hit the light, then you go through. But it was unbelievable. Kissimmee is just the traffic there is one of the worst I've ever seen in yeah. my life anywhere. Yeah. You know, so. I, I hit it I hit it probably just, about uh, 4.30, 5 o'clock on the way back from St. Cloud, and uh, it was just, you might as well camp and, and just wait, uh, you know, midnight, one o'clock mm-hmm. or so, and, and then make a run for it, but uh, just ridiculous. Um, uh, but, it, you know, it's something new, and, and uh, you know, I never knew downtown Kissimmee looked like that, the historic district, I guess it is, I don't, I don't know, or maybe that's the main downtown, but uh, it's like, oh, this ain't too bad. Yeah, it's a neat like little a, town. Yeah, it really is. It I mean, like uh, Ebor City. Whenever different places... Mm-hmm list quaint towns they always you know Kissimmee is yeah. usually one of the, on the list but yeah. uh, well those are people boy, the traffic those is, are people uh, who don't have to drive in Kissimmee if they if they'd actually yeah, there you go yeah. rate the town by you know driving it. it would never make the list um what a never terrible yeah. experience it, I don't know what they would have to blow it up and start all over you yeah. know and then Sunrail was um, going adjacent to the Sunrail I, I I didn't know it went through you know I I had never mm. seen a Sunrail train except on TV a couple of times, but all of a sudden this thing's just blazing down the tra- tracks. Just blah, was like wow, fast <laughs> and loud. Oh yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> uh, and and you're going, what was that? <laughs> yeah, every five minutes, one was going one way, one was going the other, and uh, I made a left mm. turn, and there's the track, and I thought, well, that's why we're we're kind of waiting. Also, we're waiting for this thing to go every five minutes. So yeah. Um, it's just, and it stops all the traffic in mm-hmm. all directions for it to fly by you. Yeah, you know, uh, during it's hour. just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. You mentioned something there though that mm-hmm. I have to address. Sure. You said you got a TSA pass. You going somewhere? Yes, uh, in September. Uh, when is it? September. I don't know. September twenty third, uh, San Diego. I will. Uh, oh, give you some more info on that because it it will. Uh, more than likely affect my uh, my show appearance that that week that week, um, like the twenty third twenty fourth I forget what day it is, but uh, yeah, going there for, till for a week. So um, doing a conference. Oh there. well, there's yeah. all, all sorts of wineries there. Maybe you can In check Diego? out. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Interesting. There's there's wineries around there. Hmm. So. Uh, go to Catch Wine and and uh, Catch Wine, Southern right. California, San Diego, and see yeah. see what's down there. You know? Have to check it out. Uh, see if I can oh. get get away and and uh, check some uh, California wines out. That would be. I mean, that's you know yeah. way far from Napa, but you know I'm sure they have something there. Um, yeah, they do. Uh, I, I know they do. Yeah. That area. It's a, In fact, you're seeing different things pop up talking about wines around San Diego. Mm-hmm. more and more so mm. so it might be something to check out well That's you know something thing. to look forward to we'll we'll yeah. look forward to hearing more about your scheduled yeah. trip then coming up and uh, <laughs> you mentioned your your program we haven't mentioned in a long time your radio show that you do oh um yeah uh, that's yeah on every yeah. you still doing it on saturday mornings saturday mornings uh 7 a.m to 9 9 something a.m eastern time on uh, Jetstream Radio, uh, so that changed. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's really great following. I mean, I'm I'm at, at the end of my little two hours. I'm like worn out because of you know chatting and you know talking to people and taking notes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's busy. <laughs> I'm not used to that. <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm, well, it was picking up before. But yeah. yeah, well, this this was from day one. It's been non-stop and it's great i mean i I love the interaction and uh you know i actually have that feedback and everything and um it's a good bunch so yeah really a good move there and he 
mm-hmm. he plays request people and mm-hmm. he, he you know and like he said he chats mm-hmm. with you and he'll uh yeah. you know engage with you and all that and so well thank you uh yeah. jet stream radio yeah. uh, um, i think you got it it, it's a free app. You, you don't yeah. have to pay for anything. It's yeah. a free app. You can download it. And yeah. and Mike is on Saturday morning, 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern. Eastern Daylight Time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, yeah. I, I listen yeah. to it on my phone on uh, TuneIn, but they have TuneIn, and uh, they have their own app over for iOS. So if you're on an Apple user, they have it there and listen to it on the web. But uh, um, big following. I mean, they, they have a... There's a ton of listeners uh, on it. That's that's what and I'm, worldwide too. I mean, yeah. it's not it's not just you know yep. American uh, listeners. It's yeah. you get you were saying you get people tuned in from all over the world. Don't yeah, they? most most of it's uh, not England and the UK, and then uh, there's that goes all the way to Australia, which by the way is 14 hours ahead of us. I found out. So. <laughs> it's like, uh. I come on at 7, 8, 7 a.m. Our time is 9 p.m. Their time the next day. No, it's the same day. No, it's the next day. I, wait. Yeah, that evening. 14 hours yeah. is 12, 14. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's that evening. But uh, I was thinking the other way because I have a meeting with someone 7 p.m. My time on Friday, which is 9 a.m. The next day, their time. And I, uh-huh. having to convert that, I'm like, oh, my gosh, what do I tell them what time it is? Anyway. Um <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah but, well not unlike all about wine where we have that's listeners true. all over the world but you yes. engage in yours continuously so that, that's that's cool that's a lot um speaking of wine <laughs> yes yeah. well we talked about we talked about the uh, the the wine and we uh, talked about you know yeah, the, we talked about wine tasting and the like tasting that, so. coming up yeah. yeah and a live guitarist did i mention that yeah. i don't know i should have told them last night it's like hey i'm going to talk about you guys um Oh well, but I, I wasn't thinking. Oh well, oh well. But, uh, yeah, it's good. Right. Oh well. <laughs> I'll call. Um, I, I uh, before we go any further, mm-hmm. I have to make a major apology. Oh. When I got off the show last week, I sat here and I was went back and I was starting to read some articles and. When I started to read one of the articles, I went, oh, my gosh, what a faux pas on my part. I had a major, major brain fart. Mm-hmm. I was talking about kava, yes, I, and I caught it. And, and I felt like jumping back on and, and hooking back up and saying, people, people, I'm sorry. But I waited patiently until this week. Last week, I was talking about kava and about how it was changing all that. And I mentioned kava was around the champagne area, and you could, you know, it's almost as good as champagne, but, uh, you know, it's not. Kava is Spanish sparkling wine. Nothing to do with the champagne area. I I was thinking Cremant, and that is around the champagne area. Cava is Spanish, and I once I realized my mistake, I went, "Oh my gosh, I'm." I would be surprised if I didn't get a dozen emails saying, "What the heck is wrong with you, guy?" I just I I don't know what happened with my brain. It just it didn't work right there, huh. and so uh, I, it, Cava is Spanish. In fact, I'm going to address a little bit more about Cava here, you know, during the show. But but I need to apologize because I kept saying. Cava was around the Champagne region of France, and it's on the outskirts and all that. That is Crement, and uh, oh. Crement or Crement or however they pronounce it, and it's you know, and Cava is Spanish. So please accept my apology. And if you went out and started talking about Cava around the Champagne area this past week, uh, based on what I said, and people started calling you an idiot, you said, "Well, Ron said so." Ron was wrong. I I made a boo boo. So mm. I wanted to get that out of the way. Before we go any further too, Mike and I were talking before the show about the fact that we have not kept you up to date on some of our guests that we had uh toward the end of last year and some of the books and movies and things that they presented and were uh, uh promoting, I guess is the best word for it. Mm-hmm. So, 
I'm going to turn this over to Mike for a little bit, let him tell you about our mm-hmm. uh, list of guests we had oh, yeah. uh, last year and all the stuff that they have to offer. I grab my list here, and there we go. I got my list, and put the record on the turntable and the needle. Take a deep breath. All right, let's try this. Okay, back in October, co-directors Mark Johnson and Mark Ryan and writer Michael Karam were on the show October 8th, 2020. The movie Wine and War, the untold story of wine in the Middle East, is about survival, survival, resilience, resilience, and struggles. Wine has been in Lebanon culture for 7,000 years. They are raising money for CAPHO, a great uh, organization, Mm -hmm. and uh, you can go to wineandwar.com wineandwar.com click the watch now button and that'll take you to uh, where you need to go to to watch it on october the 15th jim lochran was on the show he's a certified wine educator and author you can visit jim lochran.com that's jim l-a-u-g-h-r-e-n.com and uh, he has uh, two book, two quick books right now out uh, called the 15 minute guide to red wine which is uh, only 28 pages uh, of good reading and 15 minute guide to white wine which is another uh, quick read and a handy reference to have as well check that out on uh, Amazon on October 29th we welcomed Joy Neighbors to our Halloween special uh, she is the author of the Family Tree Cemetery Field Guide How to Find Record and Preserve your your ancestors' graves, including topics to plan your trip to the cemetery, research, make sense of your research, and digging deeper into other records or preserving uh, cemeteries. It's available at Barnes & Nobles, Amazon, and other outlets. On November 19th, we welcomed Michael Brown, author of Pinot Rocks, and he's also a winemaker. The book is available on Amazon.com. Pinot Rocks is available in any format, and the audio format is great because William Shatner did the audiobook version of his book. That's right, Captain Kirk. On January 14th, we had a great conversation with Cap Kaplowitz, a podcaster and blogger of cigars, spirits, coffee, and wine. And All About Wine's own show host, Ron, is also the wine panelist on the show. For more information, visit kaplowitz.xyz. That's K-A-P-L-O-W-I. I-T-Z dot X-Y-Z. On February 11th, 2021, we had founder and producer of Beer, Wine, and Spirits, Jeff Bradford, on the show, the filmmaker dedicated to revealing the stories behind the labels of our favorite drinks. On February 25th, we welcome Natalie McLean, podcast host of the popular Unreserved Wine Talk. She's also an author of Red, White, and Drink All Over and Unquenchable, a tipsy quest for the world's best bargain wines, plus several quick reads available on her website. She is also the wine expert on CTV's The Social, which is Canada's largest daytime television show, CTV News, and Global Television's Morning Show. You can pick up her ultimate food and wine pairing guide for free by visiting her website at nataliemclean.com forward slash all about wine that's natalie m-a-c-l-e-a-n dot com forward slash all about wine very good thank you mike thank you and that that's been just some of the guests we've had over the 10 years that we've been on the show, mm-hmm. 10 years plus, well, actually 11 years plus, yeah. just some of the guests. Those are the ones most recent. And those are all still available. So yeah. if you get an opportunity to get a chance, check any of those out. And uh, I'm sure it will be an enjoyable view or read or whatever you happen to do. I received a postcard, which I thought was really cool. It is from a company called Go Fermentator, uh, Go Fermentor dot com and it's they're they're advertising an advanced wine fermenter it automatically punches down uh which means that whenever you have the juice sitting there with the skins and all that it automatically punches it down to put so the skins just don't float on top it mixes it up so it gives color it's got a built-in press you press a button and it presses out the wine. Uh, you don't have to do a separate cleaning or anything. There's no cleaning. It's a single-use liner. 
um, no wash or wastewater, and environmentally friendly. And it's a quick, easy setup. Uh, it's a four foot by four foot base, and you just plug the thing in to a 110 volt, and it takes care of itself. Um, $2,970, which is the complete starter bundle. If you are a beginning winemaker and want to take care of everything in one big little package, that is the way to go. So just to let you know, you can get a hold of them at www.gofermenter, G-O-F-E-R-M-E-N-T-O-R.com. They're located where? They're located all over the place, France, Australia, and Georgia, Texas, and New York. So, oh, wait a minute. No, not that. What is it? Australia, France, and U.S. Okay. So, this, I, I got that, and it's a, it's a really good little machine. If anybody's looking at making wine um, up to 150 gallons, which is you can make without the government coming in and arresting you for bootlegging. So, is that, you can do, do that. You, do you age it and everything, or... Yeah, it, it's it's all. It looks like it's all within the one one really? thing here. What if it's stainless steel? Uh, or set or schedule or? on your smartphone hmm. uh, for it to punch down. Remote on uh, monitoring app, uh, either Android or oh uh, Apple, and uh, it's uh, yields up to 150 gallons. Wow. Um, yeah, it's really, really. I was quite impressed. I, and for three thousand dollars, that's really a, a good price mm -hmm. for what you're getting. Because if you buy the stuff separately that you need to do all that stuff, it's going to run into at least twice that. So mm. it's uh, they they offer other stuff too. They they have a few other things, but that was really an impressive little little machine they have there. So just. And they also sell the liner separately and uh, the dip tubes and and uh, stuff like that. So, but anybody out there looking at making your own wine up to 150 gallons, that is a good good way to do it. I mean, you can use it over and over again. It's not going to end up costing you money, and you know it's going to be clean and stuff, which is always a problem too. Okay, now, I've got some stuff to tell you about here. We're finally getting into wine. It only took us a half hour, but uh, we're finally, <laughs> finally getting into to wine here. And let me pull these things up. Uh, let's see. Nope, that's not it. That's it. There we go. All right. I said I was going to address Cava again. Now, Cava is a Spanish sparkling wine. The article that I was looking at was uh, last week was Cava's last shot at survival. Cava, they're saying that Cava needs to rebrand itself. It is, well, the article went on to say that it has, settled into a nice, cozy little spot that is not expanding it. It is a something that's been there for a long time. People just sort of go to it, but they don't really seek it. And the article went on to say that they need to do that. So back in 2012, a uh, group realized that it needs to be done, so they started to do more. And what they're doing is starting to designate more areas as kava. They're starting to have stricter rules for kava. They're starting to have uh, higher end kava. Uh, instead of just the you know ten, twelve dollar bottles, they're starting to put the regulations on it so that they can be aged more or minimum age. The reserve of wines must be aged for 18 months. Uh, 
all future Cava de Gordo Superior wines must be based on organically grown grapes. And uh, they are coming out with a whole list of new uh, guidelines and rules that they hope will result in uh, making Cava uh, premium? I, I hate to say premium because just changing the rules doesn't automatically make it premium, but it can uh, end up with some top end sparkling wine and make people realize that it is. They're looking at aging better, using different grapes, using uh, some of the styles that has made different sparkling wines around the world uh, good. And so they are approaching it that way. So Cava, that's Spanish sparkling wine. And it's a, uh, uh, they're, they're looking at uh, changing, changing their, their, uh, their face. They've been settled into it and it's been, uh, good for so long, but they, they want to make people notice them, and they figured that that's going to happen. Okay. Uh, and then this is another thing that uh, Kaba, there we go, new rules for Kaba is coming into effect. Uh, in April, the Cava DO, which is uh, the DO is the uh, uh, designation for Cava uh, District. Uh, I don't know what it exactly stands for. I, I probably should have checked that out before then. But the the, the new DO uh, comes into effect. In April. Now, this is the first big shakeup of regulatory rules since the Cava deal was first created 30 years ago. So, this is you know quite a thing. Under the new regulations, new tiers of H wines are being introduced. Cava de Garda, uh, Garda for Cavas that have been aged for more than nine months, while wines aged more than 18 months will be known as Cava de Garda Superior. Okay, these grapes for this top tier must come from wines that are at least 10 years old and grown organically uh, with five-year transition period and have uh, quantity yields of a maximum of 10,000 kilograms a hectare. So they're, they're really putting, I mean, all the way through, they're, they're changing the, the standards for kava. Uh, the long age category will include a Cava's Reserva, which is 18 months up from 15, and Grand Reserva, minimum of 30 months aging. And they also have a Cava de oh, Parisia Califico, Calificato, which comes from a special plot and it has to be aged a minimum of 36 months. So, wow. Uh, they announced that by 2025, Cava wines will be 100% organic, which is r really quite a leap, quite a quite a jump there. So, uh, the uh, uh, Javier Pages, president of the regulatory board, said that it, uh, it's something that needs to be done. It is the most demanding position regulation in the world for quality deal sparkling wines using the strict traditional method and that it will place the Cava deal at the forefront of quality of sparkling wine designations of origin. So, oh, there you go, Designate deal, designation of origin. So, uh, uh, big shake up on Cava, but if you get Cava, you know you're going to you get some really, really good stuff because they are really putting some effort into it and trying to give it a name. I mentioned last week that the tariffs have been settled, so we're not paying tariffs for the wines coming across. That has been going on for 17 years, and I said it was an airplane war. 
and it, it has been basically. I uh, found out what happened was that. Uh, let's see. I just saw it here. Uh, the uh, uh, the EU was giving uh, was giving money. Oh, here it is. Uh, Airbus Boeing uh, was getting money from the EU, and the United States was backing up. Well, Airbus, rather, was uh, getting money, and the U.S. was backing up Boeing, and so therefore it started this tariff war. I mean, you know, they they weren't happy with the airplanes and what was going on there. So uh, the dispute started, here it is, the dispute started in 2004 when the U.S. filed a complaint with the World Trade Organization about EU subsidies for Airbus. And then the EU said, no, you can't do that. I'm going to file a complaint against you about U.S. aiding Boeing. And so the World Trade Organization ruled several times that essentially both sides were in the wrong. But the tariff started anyway. And so uh, the uh, also unresolved in the trade dispute uh, with several countries over digital services taxes. That dispute has seen the U.S. impose tariffs on wine glasses from Austria, but not on the wine themselves. So your glasses may cost you more, but the wine itself is not being tariff. So it's childish. If you ask me, it's childish. The whole thing is, you know, leave our wine alone. We don't want to pay more money because you're mad because somebody's subsidizing an airplane. Uh, we don't care. So, but the tariffs have stopped. It has stopped for, let's see, this is 2021 for five years. So in 2026, it is up to the president at that time to decide if he wants to just stop it or if he wants to start it again or whatever. So we will wait and see, but we've got ourselves a luxury of five years here without those um, silly games that they're playing. Uh, okay, let me go on to the next one here. And this blind ambition. Oh, I, I told you about this last week. This is the uh, Zimbabwe team on the Wine Olympics team. Now, this is really cool. Wineacuity.com, W-I-N-E-A-C-U-I-T-Y, wineacuity.com, is the United States uh, link to the Wine Olympics. Uh, Zimbabwe came in and did a... a a movie, actually, they, uh, uh, a movie about it, and they told about how they were doing all that. But this is really cool. If you haven't checked it out yet, check out the wineacuity.com website that tells you about, well, basically it's slanting toward the United States, but uh, you can also go to club, um, oh, geez, C-L-U-B-O-E-N-O-L-O-G-I-Q-U-E dot com. And that will take you to the uh, Zimbabwe site. And at the bottom of that, they also have a link to the Wine and War movie that Mike just was telling you about earlier, uh, the uh, film review and, and telling about that. So... That's on that page also. But Wine Olympics, I never knew it existed until just last week, and we discovered that. And the mic found our wineacuity.com. So it is it's cool. It, it's a cool site and a cool, cool thing to check out. Okay, now let's see. What's this next one? Oh, here we go. We did an interview with Alabama Winery oh, quite a few years ago. 
Jim Edens was our interviewer from Perdido Vineyards. There was a really good interview with him from a site called Uncharted Wines and Spirits. And it, this is a good site, by the way. Uncharted, U N C H A R T E D dash wines dot com. Check it out. They've got uh, wine reviews, spirit reviews, cocktail recipes, uh, different grapes, uh, interviews, uh, all that. It, it's it really is an interesting site. But but check it out. But they interviewed Jim Evans or Evans. I I I think it's Evans, and it was really an interesting interview. He talked about fighting the government, and that's one of the things when we talked with him, he talked about fighting the government and how it went through and all that. And he talked about how the government has done things and what they've done to try to, you know, curtail wine sales. And he said a winery moved out of Alabama and moved just across the border into Florida because of Alabama's laws. Uh, they said that the, uh, some costs of the taxes back in, in uh, 2001, the government repelled the 1979 Farm Winery Act, and so immediately taxes went from $25 a year to $10,000 a year, uh, which, you know, just eliminated wineries and all that. And it just is really an interesting interview. It, it uh, talks about... Uh, what he's been doing all the years and how he's been fighting stuff and how he's been uh, trying to make it fair uh, within the state of Alabama. And he's an old Marine who retired from the Marines, and he is a big, big advocate of muscadine wine. He said it's the, it's the American wine, our American grape, and we really should embrace it and make wines out of it and have it become number one. Why are we wasting our time on these French hybrids when we should be doing our own? And so he goes on about that for a while here. But it's a, a good interview. Uh, really, check it out. Uncharted-Wines, unchartedwines.com. And you can um, look under the post where it says uh, interviews. It's it, it's pretty long, but it's an easy read. Uh, and Jim Eddins and of Perdido Vineyards. Uh, and after you read that, you can also go back to the archive of us interviewing him. And really is uh, a good tie-in with the two of them if you do it that way. Okay. Uh Let's go to uh, this one. Uh, this, yeah, Chianti Classico. Chianti Classico is a small region in Italy. A small region. I mean, it really, it really isn't the uh, enormous region as as most of these areas are. But the Chianti Classico. As, is dividing up into subzones, or UGAs, they're calling it, which actually stands for, and I will destroy this for you, but, you know, uh, Unita uh, Geographic uh, Agenutive, or Additional Geographical Units. Uh, that's what it translated as. And it's going to name new areas that can produce County Classical. And there's uh, 500 County Classical producers voted 90% in favor of this proposal. So this is going to happen. Uh, the Black Rooster uh, is the legend of Gallo Negro logo. Uh, the County Classical is... Uh, allowed the black rooster on the bottles and said this is going to distinguish and show people. And it has. I mean, if you 
they're looking for Cante Classico. You, you'll see it on the bottles. In fact, Mike mentioned going to an Italian restaurant. We went to a little local Italian restaurant called the uh, Leaning Tower uh, here. Uh, what was it? A week and a half ago. And we had some Chianti there, and it had the rooster on it. I mean, it was actual. It, it shows you the Chianti Classico with that rooster on it. It's just sort of a, a cool way to designate that it was uh, official, legitimate. Uh, the um, UGA project uh, has been a priority for the last three years for the Chianti Classico region. And uh, it has... Uh, Growing to the point now where they are ready to put it into existence. Um, at first, it was a challenge. They're saying and they had to divide it up and keep everybody happy, which you know you can't keep everybody happy. But the article said that they did a pretty good job of keeping everybody happy. It's possible for the entire denomination. It will help explain the diversity. They're saying. And it will uh, also uh, give people an opportunity to start understanding the different areas instead of just looking at County Classical as one big old area that does these grapes. They'll be able to refer to the differences in the expression and the way the wines are made and all that instead of just saying, well, this is a, a county from this area and that's it. Uh, the... Uh, County Classical members have voted to accept changes to the grape variety regulations, too, within the Grand Silesium category. Uh, the minimum requirement for Sangiovese has been increased to 90% from 80%, which that's a lot there. I mean, the remaining 10% is limited to grapes that are native to the County Classical area. And there is one, two, three, four, five, six of them listed here. And international grapes like Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot will no longer be permitted. So uh, this is new specifications apply strictly to the Grand uh, Sezioni and not extend to the Reserva or the Annata wines. So uh, it's a higher Sangiovese, and you're going to be able to tell the difference in it, too, in, in the taste and all that. Uh, the majority of County Classical Grants says any wines already conform to these regulations. There are some outliers that are going to have to come up to the standards uh, because of the areas that they want to continue being the County Classical. So... It's just uh, new new regs and new standards that they're doing. Um, some of the winemakers were trying to pass the 100% Sangiovese, uh, but that has, well, because of climate change and because of the variances in the weather and all that and everything, they felt it was going to be too restrictive. And so they decided not to go 100%. They're taking it down to the 90%, which is still pretty pretty restrictive. And uh, the final step now is earning the approval by the Minister of Agriculture in Rome, which could take up to a year. But that's a formality. And the hard part, they're saying it's done. You're probably going to be seeing new regulations in the county classical uh, by 2023. So there you go. It's uh, I, I thought that was interesting. County classical is a, a nice, nice wine, nice taste. And if you're not familiar with it, you really should get yourself familiar. Okay. Let's go to the next one here. And this is Champagne. Booming Champagne. Quick read here, quick quick info for you. Champagne is coming back. And I say coming back simply because it took a nosedive during COVID. 
it was down in almost all categories in COVID. The uh, worst month was the uh, uh, April of 2020, where champagne sales dropped by 67.9%. Wow, that's a lot. The next month, 55.9%. It just, for some, well, people not going out. No reason to celebrate. No reason to pop open a bottle of good bubbly. So they didn't. Now, there's reason again. April of this year, well, let's start March of this year, it jumped up by 33%. April of this year, champagne sales jumped up by 200.1%, and in May, 155.5%. So it is making a comeback. People are starting to buy champagnes again, and I'm sure along with that, they are starting to buy uh, the uh, other sparkling wines. One of the things that hurt, though, the economy has been great everywhere on Champagne, but the Suez Canal blockage, I, I'm sure you remember that when the when the boat went sideways in the Suez Canal, that hurt because Champagne was being shipped, shipped, literally, and they had to sit out in the water for a while, and it's not good because they were concerned about heat and the time is taking and all that. You see it's a quick ride through the canal and you're there. So but they survived that and uh champagne was twenty five million bottles uh twenty five million bottles after World War Two and in over sixty five years it has gone to three hundred million bottles uh, a year. So it's coming back to normal levels uh, before the COVID now, and people are starting to purchase champagne again, the true champagne. And again, I think all sparkling wines are probably in that category, not just champagne. Okay. This is something that, you know, if, if, if you're interested in something like this, this is a fun little book to read. There's a new book out by a couple of guys in New Zealand, an Ian Harvey and a Dion Monday. It's Great Vine Diseases of New Zealand, and it's dedicated to the identification and management of grapevine diseases in New Zealand. I get a chance to look at some of the articles and stuff in that book. I was able to get a um, a preview. And interesting, They're really interesting. They uh, illustrate, uh, there's photographs all over the place. They show the diseases. They show what causes it. Uh, a lot of fungus or fungi that uh, uh, they show. And it's really became, uh, it's becoming a great teaching book in New Zealand, and a lot of those diseases apply to grapevines everywhere, not just in New Zealand. So, uh, a great little book. It's, uh, what is the actual name of it? Uh, the book is Grapevine Diseases of New Zealand. Now, I guess that's the name of it. Grapevine Diseases of New Zealand. Um, just if you're interested in, in that stuff and what can affect grapevines, uh, it, it's a constant battle. Uh, you, you, probably don't notice it. I mean, vineyards are constantly battling all sorts of stuff, anywhere from bugs to uh, to mildew to all, well, you name it, fungus and everything else. And just all sorts of organisms can hit a grapevine and or the grapes. And this book talks about them and how to manage them. So I uh, thought, thought it was interesting myself, but of course, I been in this business and done this, so of course I will think it's interesting. Okay. Uh, this next one here is... Uh, oh, here we go. This Grapes and Herbicide Drift. 
I, I've talked about this before. There has been lawsuits around the world because of it. Uh, and it's something that is in the news again here. This is out of Washington State. Uh, the uh, said that the you, you have to be careful. It's been windy all around the country. Uh, the the heat has been holding stuff in, but the the wind drift and stuff and the herbicide drift that can cause injury to grapes is something that is very serious. You, they, they're, they're warning everybody, be sure you do not spray during a time when there's any bit of wind at all because it could drift. Last year, was it, or year before last, a vineyard in France sued neighboring vineyard or neighboring crop because of drift from spring there and got onto the grapevines and killed a bunch of grapevines. So it's a serious thing, but this is something I haven't seen brought up for a while. And it's, it's something that uh, in, in the industry is uh, something you really have to be cautious of, not just on what you're spraying around for yourself, but also what you're spraying around for, well, you know, what's, what's spraying on anyone else. Uh, this is something I didn't know about. Sudden vine collapse. I hadn't heard of sudden vine collapse. I, I don't know why, it, but it's uh, hitting not just was well, central California uh, too late. It's just uh, a year ago, a team of researchers, University of California, Davis, were trying to understand what this sudden vine collapse was. And I don't know the full extent of the cause. Uh, a year later, some progress is being made, but it's still unexplained as why patches of grapevines are collapsing without apparent reason. Uh, uh, some growers are losing as much as 30% of their vines over a year. And, you know, a loss of vines can be expected, but 30%, uh, these are stunted, dying, or dead vines. And uh, it's, they don't know why. Uh, it's just uh, alarming, they're saying. Uh, initial analysis a decade ago turned out the specific pathogens but it's not consistent throughout the vineyard or anywhere. It's just certain vines here and there, and it shows uh, leaf row virus, which can take a toll and all that. But this sudden vine collapse is something that is concerning to a lot of vineyards because they still don't know what it is. It has been found and documented uh, throughout the San Joaquin Delta and the coastal counties, which, you know, Monterey, Paso Ropo, stuff like that, Modesto, Fresno, Tulare, Kern counties. Um, some cases, the patches are so large that it can be seen by the Google Earth satellite. It's not just, you know, two or three vineyard, or two or three vines, but a big bunch of the vineyard. Uh, they're trying to find out what is causing it. They don't know. Uh, they're saying virus since the rootstock are uh, predisposed to root st stress, which could cause some of this, but they've changed rootstock and some of these vines aren't all on the same rootstock. It is different ones that are being tested and different ones that it's showing up on. Uh, no cure for the grapevine viruses now or in the foreseeable future, says uh, Dr. Stephanie Bolton, who is uh, at the Lodi Wine Growers uh, Association. There's financial assistance to the USDA, but uh, you need to remove the leaf row virus infected vineyard before you can put a new one in. And it takes time to grow a new one. So it's a concern. Uh, I will continue to monitor this for you and let you know what's going on. But this is something I just heard about. I, I 
didn't know this was happening with the grapevines. This is dated here July the 20th, uh, 24th. So uh, just a few days ago. So I'll try to keep my eye on this situation of, of sudden vine collapse. Uh, don't know what's causing it or what it is. Um, I'll, I'll make a note of that and we'll follow that up in the future here. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. And uh, a new sparkling, the story of champagne, new film to be released. Uh, this is wine and film fans in the UK will be able to see sparkling, the story of champagne in select theaters now. And the U.S. debut uh, view for it's planned for August the 13th. And it's a documentary film set to launch in several other countries, too. And it is a uh... Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Please hold, and you will be able to listen to the show. The, you are uh, now in the host champagne queue. business and how it's made and, and the interviews with people and all sorts of stuff. It looks interesting. I'm personally looking forward to it. It, it seems like it could be a very interesting movie. It is available in England now. I, I think they said Australia too now, but not yet in the United States. Uh, yeah, release in Australia and New Zealand is already out. And the U.S. and Scandinavia is set for August. Uh, and then uh, Israel, it should hit them in sometime in September. So, a uh, new movie about champagne called Sparkling, the story of champagne. And it says here, and I just saw something I wanted to pass on, yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, journalists Don and P.D. Cladstrup, who are the authors of the book Wine and War, are interviewed about this. So this should be interesting, too, the ones that we talked to. So this is a uh, new movie coming out about champagne. Like I say, I'm looking forward to it. It looks like it could be a very informative book if you want to know more, or movie, if you want to know more about champagne Without a doubt, this is the movie that you need to Unmuted. see. Uh, 88 minutes running time, so not quite an hour and a half. Uh, but Sparkling, the Story of Champagne is the name of it. And let's see, where is something else here? That... Uh, oh, where is it? Oh, I had a note here, and I can't find where it is. Oh, there it is. New round of battles with the glassy winged sharpshooter. Oh my gosh, it just won't go away. Uh, the glass winged sharpshooter is now in the San Joaquin Valley 20 years ago, and they've held the line, but it's starting to pick up again. And they said they can't stop. It is something that they have to continue to monitor. Uh, in Temecula, thousands of acres uh, were affected by the glassman sharpshooter transmitting Pierce disease. And it's getting worse. It's an infestation it's as far north as Sacramento County that were caught early and stopped, but San Joaquin Valley and the treatment efforts were aimed at suppression, not eradication, because there have been so many there. 
So it has been an ongoing problem. But Pierce disease and glasswing sharpshooter raising its ugly head in California, uh, even more so. We here in the southern states know how that is. We battled it and we're doing it all the time. But it's just uh, uh, starting to wear on them in California continuously. And it's not done yet. So, so uh, let's see what... Uh, Okay, I want a couple more things I want to talk about here before we leave for this. this is that the one? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yes, here we go. Florida retailer asked Supreme Court to review adverse eighth circuit decision upholding Missouri's retail shipping laws. This caught my eye because I'm from Missouri and I live in Florida. What's happened is the Supreme Court ruled a while back that you can't limit in-state shipping from other states because it's against the Commerce Clause. Well, a Missouri a Missouri Eighth Court said, "No, you can. We aren't allowing different states to ship here." Florida says, "What? That's not right. You should, because the Supreme Court says you should." And the Missouri Court says, "Well, I don't care what the Supreme Court says. This is our rule." So. They're asking, Florida's asking the Supreme Court to rule again on this and to slap the hand of Missouri and say, hey, you know, when we say something, that doesn't mean that you can just change the, the rules again. And so that's what we're looking at. Uh, <laughs> it's ongoing. Always, always on. And there's always something. And it's, this one is, Florida want to ship stuff in Missouri. Missouri is saying, no, you can't because we're not going to let you. And Florida is saying, well, the Supreme Court says we can. And Missouri says, I don't care what the Supreme Court says. We're not going to let you. So September, they're hoping that the courts will hear it. But you never know. Uh, the Supreme Court decides on just so few cases, and when they do, they... But this might make it, because it's a lower court going against what the Supreme Court said that they should be doing, and that might make a difference if them listening to it sooner or not. So, uh, but in the past nine years, here you go, there have been over 2,000 changes to state alcohol laws around the country. So, uh, you know, it's it's an ongoing thing. It's something that, you know, we can, people have dedicated their whole lives to following up on this stuff and doing this stuff. We're not going to, but I'll pass on the bit of information that I can get on this. So there we go. We're some information tonight to- Quite a bit. Inform you. Yeah. Uh and uh, as is, seems to be customary every week, I did disconnect again. So uh, did you? <laughs> I, I, guess I don't Facebook. see because I'm you know. <laughs> yeah, you're on other screens. Uh, yeah, YouTube and Facebook. Yeah. We took a little uh, time out for uh, thirty seconds or less and uh, joined right back in again. So here we are. Yeah. I don't, wow. I don't know what's going on, but uh, oh well. Uh, it's the great technology we have. So. Yeah. Wow, that's just amazing. It just seems like you all don't notice it, but every week mm -hmm. Mike tends to leave us for a minute or two and then come back. Uh, uh, it, you know, it's like he's got to take a potty break or something. I don't know. I just. I think it's a. Uh, um, let me, one other thing here I want to talk about mm -hmm. quickly. Uh, they ask wine pros, I say they, this is what 
magazine, what article is this out of? This is out of Vine Pear. Uh, Vine Pear does a whole bunch of stuff on wine, but they asked a bunch of polls, what are the worst trends in wine right now? And this, these are directors of liquid at restaurants. These are sommeliers around the country. These are vice presidents and presidents of shipping companies and uh, masters of wine. And, you know, people with all the little letters after the name of all the stuff that they have earned. And the worst trends in wine right now is hating on natural wine. And people do. They hate natural wine. And natural wine is basically wine. It's natural. Worst thing right now, diet wine. <laughs> yeah, really. Wine apps. Oh, they don't like wine apps. Low-carb and low-sugar wines. Confusion about the term red blends. Manufactured character in wine. Hmm. Clean wine. Natural wine without a holistic approach. Complicated corkscrews. And finally, wine professionals who don't consider budget. Hmm. So that's just what they're saying. That right now, these are the worst worst trends. I mean, there's some of those in there that I have to give a big thumbs up to. But uh, it's uh, the worst trends in wine right now. So uh, I wanted to throw that out. That was just a quick one there. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we are at uh, eight ten p.m. on July the twenty. Wow. Yeah, we will uh, <laughs> win it overtime. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's okay because we, well, we talked a little bit at the beginning. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was you know, a yeah. lot of a lot of the beginning was not about wine, but uh, that happens sometimes. Um, we will many a time. Yeah. Many times. We will return <laughs> August the fifth, uh, which is a week from today, August the fifth, and uh seven PM Eastern time again. And um as always, thank you for joining us and uh tuning in. And if you have any comments or feedback, please do email the show that goes right to Ron, but you can email anytime all about wine one zero one at gmail dot com. And if you need to Missed it. If you missed it for some reason, you just play it back over and over as many times as you need to get the email address. That's it. Yeah. Just uh, do that yeah. and uh, contact the show and, you know, um, we'll see what we can do here. All right. I will uh, go ahead and run. And if, mm -hmm. if you're not following us on Facebook, do so. Yeah. Uh, we are on. Uh, we never tell you to, but, you know, follow us on Facebook. Yeah. Facebook, Twitter, um, all we don't, online BTR on yeah. both of those. Yeah. I believe. We don't flood you with yeah. stuff. It's just, you know, no. just punch Everyone's a like small. in there and follow us. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, show announcements, uh, and uh, every once in a while I'll put something on Facebook, uh, some kind of thing I found. Yeah. But, uh, yeah just Me too. Or run, every run, once in a while I'll throw something up there. Yep. Anytime yeah. you hear them say, uh, oh, I'm going to post this uh, article, and then there it is. <laughs> so, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Stuff you need to know more no. about. So, yeah, do it. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Thanks again. Have a safe weekend and a week ahead. And uh, return with us next Thursday. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Be safe. This concludes tonight's broadcast of All About Wine with your host, Ron. For show information, links to All About Wine on Twitter and Facebook, oh, or to be a guest on this show, visit the show website at www.allaboutwinebtr.com. Archived shows are available for download on iTunes or on our show page at blogtalkradio.com forward slash allaboutwine. Thank you for listening. Drink responsibly, and we'll see you next time on All About Wine.